Of course, if you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and attempt or reattempt the question before listening on. In part A, we are asked to calculate the magnetic dipole moment, or just magnetic moment, which is symbolized by this Greek letter mu, and in order to calculate the magnetic moment, we simply have to multiply the number of turns that are present in the current loop times the current, and then times the area of that current loop. Now in this case, we have a right triangle representing our loop, so for the area, we would use the formula for the area of a triangle, which is one half base times height. So in fact, we can rewrite the equation as mu is equal to n times i times one half base times height. If we look at the picture here, we can see that the base of our right triangle would be the 30 centimeters, and then the height would be the 40 centimeters. When we plug those into our equation, we have to make sure to convert them into meters. So we'll be doing that shortly. Let's go ahead and calculate the magnitude of this magnetic moment. The question notes that it is a current loop, and that indicates that the number of turns in this loop is just one. It's just a single loop. So the value for capital N would be one multiplied by the current, which is given as 5 amps, and then multiplied by 1 half, <clears throat> excuse me, and as noted, the base needs to be converted into meters, so we'll take 30 and we'll multiply it by 10 to the minus 2, and that will convert the centimeters into meters, and then the same thing is true with the height. We'll take the 40 and multiply that by 10 to the minus 2 to get it into meters. We punch this into our calculators and we end up with 0.3. And then if you look at the setup, the unit for the magnetic moment will come out to be amps. And then we multiplied meters by meters. And that makes meters squared. So altogether it becomes amps times meters squared. And this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. We'll move on to part B, which asks us to determine the torque that is acting on the loop. And in order to determine the torque acting on the loop, we shall be using this equation right here. This tells us that the torque on this current carrying loop placed in a magnetic field is equal to the magnetic moment, which we've just determined, multiplied by the magnitude of the magnetic field, which was given in the question, and then times the sine of the angle. Now it's important to note that the angle will be between the direction of the magnetic moment and the direction of the magnetic field. So why don't we take a moment to determine the direction of the magnetic moment. So we go back to our picture. We've drawn the current with a purple vector, and this is an arbitrary choice. We've drawn it pointing upward. It could have been pointing downward. It won't affect our answer to part B. And in order to determine the direction of the magnetic moment, we would have to obey a right-hand rule. Now, my artistry skills are lacking. I'm sure you hear your teachers say that all the time. So I'm going to put this picture in here. This is going to help us determine the direction of the magnetic moment in our case. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to grasp the wire with your right hand and you need to make sure that when you do this, your fingers are directed in the same direction as the current. So if you look in this picture, you can see the current is pointing sort of down and to the right along the top section of the wire. But of course, if you follow that current backwards, it would be pointing in this direction for this particular section of wire. So again, your four fingers have to be going in the direction of the current. Your outstretched thumb would be the direction of the magnetic moment. So in this picture, it's kind of projecting to the right side of the figure. If we applied that same principle to our triangle by pointing our four fingers in the direction of the current, and then our outstretched thumb would give us the direction of the magnetic moment, we would hopefully be able to see that in this picture for the triangle, the magnetic moment would be directed into the page. So we have a vector representing the magnetic moment into the page that's usually symbolized with an X. So we'll just put a little X there and then label that with mu. And then the magnetic field direction was given in the question. It says that it was parallel to the current in the 50 centimeter side of the loop. So we've drawn the magnetic field with this green vector parallel to the hypotenuse of our right triangle, that is the 50 centimeter side. And hopefully after all this, we can see that since the magnetic moment is into the page, and the magnetic field is kind of going in this direction, the angle between them would actually simply be 90 degrees. It's basically the angle between a z-axis, which is where mu is pointing, and then this magnetic field, which is again pointing down and to the right. So the angle between that z-axis and essentially an x-y plane, which is where the magnetic field is pointing, is 90 degrees. 
So we can go back to our equation and begin to plug everything in here. We found that mu in part A was 0.3 amps meters squared multiplied by the magnitude of the magnetic field. That was given as 80 millitesla. Because it's in millitesla, we have to multiply it by 10 to the minus 3 to convert it into tesla. And then times the sine of the 90 degree angle. We'll just punch this in. And when we do so, we will get a torque of approximately 0 0.024. And then torque through a dimensional analysis always works out to be Newton meters in standard form. So this would be the correct answer to part B.